Well, I'm standing here in the marketplace of Harlem in the Netherlands, and you see this beautiful uh, marketplace with the church in the background. It's a beautiful day, a little windy, a little rainy, a little cold, but it's wonderful to be here. So right around the corner, we're coming to the clock shop that was the original location of the, of the Tin Boom family. And we're going to go to the Corey Tin Boom home. And today we're going to see what God did with an ordinary woman and did extraordinary things. So here we are at the original shop where the Tin Booms did their business for generations as clockmakers. But they lived right around the corner in uh, their home and that's where they entered in and this is the place they call the hiding place. This is the place that they protected those who were uh, under the uh, persecution, the Jews during the World War. send us anyone wider than me. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we ask your blessing on this hiding place. Well, here we are in the very room, the very bedroom of Corey Ten Boom. That's right. And it's a wonderful privilege, I, I'm sure, for you to be able to show this to people. What is their reaction usually like when they walk into the place where the real hiding place is? A heartfelt uh, amazement that they can be in the very place. When, when we think about faith and we think about people of faith, sometimes we make them like celebrities. We don't understand they really live in little tiny bedrooms mm -hmm. where they give the little they have to do what God wants them to do. And so I can imagine that it blesses you to see that kind of amazement when people walk in. So it's really a, an opportunity for the Lord to work powerfully in the lives of people from all over the world who visit this museum. So it's a little small Even house. though she's gone, yes. the, the story, story and the testimony continue. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's after seven. Did you smell breakfast? Yeah. Well, here I am in this small space. It's two feet by eight feet. And really, it could crowd as many as 10 people in here if, uh, if they needed to hide whenever uh, the soldiers or the Gestapo would come. It's amazing to think of this small, narrow space that you wouldn't want to be in unless your life depended on it, and it did. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful to have this opportunity to stand here, and it really means something to me to know that, you know, God always makes a way. Even if it's through a narrow place, He still makes a way. I felt that today the Lord would have us read from Romans chapter 8. What then can separate us from Christ's love? Can hardship or calamity? Can persecution or abuse? Despite all this, we have overwhelming victory through Christ who loves us. In all creation, will ever be able to separate us Around the side door. Come on. 
I understand it. The, 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 on that day, all of them were hidden. None were discovered as a result of exactly hiding right. here on the day that uh, that her family was arrested. That's exactly now, right. How was it hidden? How, how was this hidden? Was it behind a wardrobe? Well, or? well you can see the, the cost of the wardrobe, and they used the, uh, the bottom portion as their entrance and exit from the hiding place. Okay. Um, but so they, they had to crawl in. That's right. You crawled wow. in and crawled out. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and Corey would have added a, an extra shelf and extra linens uh, after the last person got in and, uh, and then closed the closet door. Um, oh. And from the inside then, they have a counterweight situation with two grandfather clock weights which they would raise and it would close a panel from the inside. So you could oh, only when you're okay. inside, close or open the door. Wow. Yeah. Führer, Lebensmittelmarken und Radio. Cory. Ihr Name? Wenbum, Kasper. I'm standing here in the parlor where a prayer meeting happened every Monday night for a hundred years. The Ten Boom family had been great believers in, and had been very bold about their faith all of their lives for generations. So God was preparing this place and these people for the moment when the great travesties would occur with the Jewish people. And uh, I think about how God prepares us and we don't even know it. And God prepared them because they were faithful. And God's just looking for us to be faithful. And, and then destiny happens when we stay faithful to God. So I am overwhelmed right now with the goodness of God who prepared for a prayer meeting for a hundred years. And it was on that Monday night during a prayer meeting that they were betrayed. That thought is so foreign to what we think would really happen, and yet it was the preparation of God to save the, the people of God and the chosen ones of God, but also to set the stage for what has now become a worldwide ministry of forgiveness and love. What a mighty God we serve. And in that moment of helping others, they were betrayed themselves. Next. Eventually, Corey herself uh, was sent to a concentration camp and she and her sister Betsy spent uh, several months in, in, in that concentration camp until her sister died there. Corey had to live that whole time knowing that God's hand was upon her even though it didn't feel like it. And I, I, I think it's a wonderful blessing to know that as she allowed the presence of God and God's strength in her life, that it changed the world and is still changing the world. Five, no, five, no. Five, no. Five, no. 
I leave here today inspired. How can you be in a place where so much courage was exhibited and not feel courageous? My favorite story about Corrie ten Boom is the story of she and her sister when they were in the concentration camp and they got lice and they were very upset over that. And then they realized the guards didn't come around because they had lice and that left them free to preach the gospel. I love the story because they not only began with one service, they had so many people who would gather there in that lice infested place. They had to go to two services and there were about 15 different countries that were represented and God just used them. They were preaching the gospel in a lice infested place. It makes me want to do something big and bold and courageous for God. I hope it makes you want to do that too. God bless you.